Hello everyone, in this video let's talk about the prompt to prompt editing method that you can use it to edit uh, images generated from a diffusion model. Let's just say you have an image of a cat riding a bicycle and you want to change the bicycle into a car. Or let's just say you have an image of a castle next to a river and you want to change the style to become the children drawing version of it. Or you have an image of a crowded place and you want to make it less crowded. For all of it you can just use this method and even though it's from 2022, many of the current papers are relied on this method or inspired from it. So I hope you enjoy it and let's just see how it works. Let's say we are given a text prompt P such as a lemon cake and we are giving it to a conditional diffusion model and it generates this image. What we hope to estimate as our objective of image editing is that if I change the prompt to P star, like let's just say chocolate cake, then I get the exact same image with the same structure of the cake, but the appearance is modified to be a chocolate cake instead. And you might say to yourself, it should be easy. If I just keep the random set fixed to remove any randomness in the noising direction, it should be doable. But what you get instead is this chocolate cake. And why is that? Well, the others in this paper investigated and found that there's additional factor that is quite important in image editing and it's nothing but the cross attention between the encoded text embedding and the pixels. And as a quick recap about what happens in cross attention, we have the pixel features that are coming from noisy pixel ZT going to phi encoder which is a bunch of convolutional layers that extracted features from these pixels. To inject these text conditions, we consider these pixel features as the query, and it is done simply by a matrix multiplication to turn them from features to queries that has to specify which pixel features are more important for the query. And then we have text tokens as the key. We do the multiplication and we achieve the attention maps that we finally multiply it by value that is again text tokens, and we have our final input that always has the same shape as the query in this case the pixel queries which we need for further layers and the denoising steps. What we should care here the most is the cross attention maps that the rows should represent the pixel values and columns should represent the text tokens and each entry for pixel i and text token j should represent the weight of the value of the j's token on the pixel i. When we look at the final output, from one view it is nothing but weighted average of these text tokens in a way that the weights are coming from the attention maps. And what this attention map should represent, the similarity between the query and the key. In our case, the similarity between the pixel features and text features. And one interesting observation they show in this paper is this figure. That remember the cross attention maps from the previous slide, the first column should represent the word E and all the values in the column should be all the image pixels. That if we reshape it back to the 2D matrix, same as an image, we see this thing shown in the figure for all different words. And now you might say we have different denoising time steps in diffusion and also different channels. Which channel and which time step is this? And the answer is it is for all the channels across all time steps. Clearly we can see that for the words such as bear or bird, the cross attention has a good understanding of where these different concepts are located in the generated image. And another cool observation is that when we look at how this cross attention evolves throughout the denoising process, we see that early in the diffusion step the structure of these concepts are formed and we don't have to wait until the end. And back to our problem, remember we have a text prompt P like a lemon cake and we want to modify it to a new text prompt P star like chocolate cake. Well, here comes the idea that since we want to preserve the structure of these concepts, let's focus on common words, in this case cake, and copy paste the cross attention map from first one to second one. Since cross attention maps are representing the structures, it kind of makes sense that we are transferring the structure and force the generative model to have the same structure of the cake when generating the new image. While also the chocolate words add the flavor of chocolate to the cake. And as easy as that, we can do the image editing for the new synthetic images. And to summarize what we have to do, we have our source prompt P and a target prompt P star and also a random seed S to control elements of stochasticity in the denoising process. Our output is the original image X source and an edited image X destination that we want to achieve. Initially, like most diffusions, we start from random Gaussian noise with zero mean and unit variance, and the seed S should control the generated noise in different rounds to not change. And for the edited image, we say the initial noise should be the same. 
Then we have the noisy in for loop that we pass the noisy image zt and prompt p and time step t with addition to the seed s to the denoiser of the diffusion model and we should get one sample less noisier zt minus 1 and also the attention maps mt. We do the same thing for the edited image, that the model is the same, but now instead receives ZT star and P star, which is for the edited image, and the only output we care to get is the attention maps MT star, because ZT minus 1 by itself shouldn't have the same structure control. And all the thing that this paper proposes is an edited function unique per each editing task that receive both of the attention maps and update new attention maps MT hat, that later in the video I have to tell you how. And finally, we use the same denoising that we used at the step 7, but with the difference that now the attention maps for some tokens are replaced and we get the less noisy MHZT-1 star that has the structure control we want. We repeat it three times and that's the end of the denoising and the end of the algorithm. So the only thing on now now is the editing function and let's just see how we can do that. First editing is word swap where we have an original prompt like a big red bicycle and we want to edit it into a big red car. One big challenge is that the car and bicycle have different geometry and to mitigate this issue, the others propose this editing function that we only replace attention maps in the first few steps of denoising. Then when the overall structure is formed, we let the model fill the details freely. And using this simple idea, we can see that the how the choice of hyperparameter T matters. Clearly, when we don't inject the attention map at all, and when we only rely on the random seed, we see that it creates a cat in a car, but it doesn't look like for the cases that the cat was riding a bicycle initially. And on the other hand, when we fully replace the attention maps, the generated image is very much similar to the case where the cat was riding a bicycle in a way that the car doesn't look like a car much. But when we go somewhere in the middle, it becomes more look like a car, but at the cost of adding more variations. And you can see a similar trend when we want to swap the word from bicycle to airplane that is more challenging. Another editing technique is adding a new phrase where you have a prompt such as a castle next to a river and you want to add some characteristics to it like children drawing of a castle next to a river. And what you expect from it is something like this figure that makes the image looks like a children drawing version of it. For defining such an editing, we can do it this way, that all it does is defining a function a that maps words from one prompt to another. Let's just say the original prompt has these six tokens and edited prompt has these nine tokens. All the thing that the function a does is that it receives an index like five and has to say what is the index for the corresponding word in the original prompt. In this example, we are dealing with the castle, so it should be word two in the original prompt. And once found, it injects the attention map from second word to the fifth word. But there is also a case like this drawing word that is new and we don't have it in the original prompt. For that, this function returns none and we don't inject any attention because these words are the new characteristics and we let the diffusion do its own thing. And the final other thing to mention is attention rewriting. Let's say we have a prompt like a fluffy red ball and we focus on a single word like fluffy and we want to make it less fluffy or more fluffy. A similar example is this figure that you can see bunny doll instead and how we can make it more fluffy. And to do this, we define the editing this way that for a single token of interest, let's just say j, we just multiply the attention map by a scalar c that is a hyperparameter between negative 2 and 2. If we put it a negative value, that means we want to weaken it, make it less fluffy, and positive should be the other way around, so it should make it more fluffy. And so far I said how to modify the generated images from the diffusion model, but what about more applicational setting where we want to edit a real image using diffusion? For that, one solution is using DDIM inversion, that once we have the original image, we can apply the inverse of DDIM to get a unique random noise such that if I have that noise as input and apply DDIM, I'm guaranteed to reach the same original image. If I can have this one-to-one -one mapping, then I can edit this image using the techniques I just told you in this video and have a real image like this one and change it to make it look like a fall season or winter season and so on. But life is not that easy and there are failure cases that when you apply the DM inversion and then go back, you see that the reconstructed image doesn't look like the real image and there are some variations either on the structure or appearance. And in the future video, I'll go more into the detail of DDIM inversion and show you why sometimes it doesn't work and how we can fix it. 
And yeah, that's all I wanted you to know about this video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. And until the next video, goodbye.